Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the upgrade to Mac OS Server. Now, a couple of things uh, to get started here. Uh, the first thing is, is again, before we do an upgrade, it's important that you make sure that you've got a backup of your uh, server install. And so I would recommend uh, taking a look at the video that I did on how to work with that upgrade, uh, that backup of your server. Uh, where I kind of cover the different things. You'll want to make sure that you've up, uh, backed up your open directory so that you have that available because you don't want to see your server crash or the open directory get corrupted and then all of that data that you've put in there for your users and groups goes away and you've got to reproduce it and really pretty much start over in a lot of different ways. So you want to make sure you have that done and then you might want to have a clone uh, of your server as well because it's a lot easier to put everything back in place. Uh, but just wanted to cover that for you because that's a big change. Now you'll notice it's uh, 5.2 uh, here is the upgrade. You notice it says Mac OS server. You can see we've got uh, upgrades to the caching server, SMB, NFS, and XSAN as well as some stuff with Profile Manager. And those are all the changes that are in there. Uh, again, it's only a point release. It's 5.2, so it's not a brand new release uh, like usually happens with server. Uh, instead, it's just uh, the only thing that's changed is the Mac OS name really is the only thing that's changed on there. So there's no charge for the upgrade. It's just a, uh, a simple point release. And you can see it's just a Mac OS server up there, and that's the, uh, the only difference. So what's going to happen now is we're going to go ahead and go through the process of doing the upgrade. And so all I need to do is uh, click on the open button. And once I've done that, it'll start the upgrade process. Okay, so here we are on the interface here for the upgrade. And all we need to do is click continue. And we get this drop down. We need to agree with the licensing agreement. So I click agree. And now I'm going to get this drop down to authenticate. So let me put in my uh, password here. Okay, once I have that in, I click Allow. And so now it's going to start the upgrade process. And so it can take a little bit of time to go through that process and to get that started and up and rolling. Uh, different people have had uh, different uh, things happen. You can see down here it tells me when what it's doing in terms of what it's configuring at a particular time. Uh, some of these will take longer for you than others. And so if it gets stuck on a particular service or a particular area, uh, don't worry about that. It's just going to take a little bit of time. You can see here I'm on the calendaring service and I'm in the mail service. And uh, for some people, the mail service took a while. You can see uh, for me there, it looks like it's still uh, rolling okay. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of speed this up a little bit so you get an idea of how long it takes and the different things that are covered before it launches us back into the interface. Okay, you can see that it's going through the web service which uh, has taken a while for me. Now to the calendar service, which also took a while for me. Uh, again, I'm speeding this up. You can see that we're getting here towards the end. Overall, it, it takes about a good 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes, and you can see it launches us now into the interface and starts to load all of the various services and things. And so it can take a little bit of time to load up each of the screens. Uh, when you go to the different tabs on the sidebar there, it can take a little bit of time to do that because it is refreshing the services, uh, starting them up, uh, getting the data, and having it displayed in front of you so that you've got it so that you can see it. And you can see it's taking a little while to load Profile Manager here. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run. And then when it's finished, I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like and go over some of the changes that are there in the new interface. Okay, so here we are with the interface now showing the services running. Uh, you'll notice now I've got all the green dots on the side, and that's because it slowly has to start each and every one of the services with some of the upgrades and stuff that it did uh, to the server application. Uh, you may have to uh, actually click on each of the services, and it's going to take a little while for the screen to load to display the information that's on there. And that's a normal part of the process, but just wanted to let you know that was there. Now, a few of the changes that have uh, taken place with this uh, point upgrade uh, to 5.2 there is uh, Profile Managers had some changes. Uh, you'll notice it's got this Apple School Manager here, and there's also some changes to things you can do with the configuration profiles. 
that uh, allow you to set things up with iOS 10 as well as some of the changes in Sierra itself. And I'm going to do some more detailed screencasts on each of these changes so that you can see them and I can walk through them. So those of you that have your servers up and running, you just want to see what's changed, I'm going to go ahead and do a specific screencast for those. So we'll do one definitely on Profile Manager. Uh, there's also been some changes to caching uh, where you can cache I iCloud data. I'm going to show you what that means and looks like again in another screencast here on the update. As well as I, I probably will cover uh, some things that you can do to make some changes uh, through Terminal uh, since the caching service itself is a zero configuration thing through this interface. So I want to show you how that works. Uh, there's also been some changes to uh, SMB. It's under file sharing where um, they've made a couple little uh, tweaks there in terms of code signing certificates and such. Uh, like I said, it'll be interesting to see if it actually fixed some of the problems that a lot of users were having with SMB, but I'm going to go ahead and test it out and I'll let you know how it works. Uh, there are also some changes to XSAN, but I'm not going to cover that because I don't have that uh, fiber connection to do, to do that where I have an XSAN server. But there were some changes there for that for those of you that may have one of those up and running. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea overall of the different changes. Uh, like I said, I'm going to put it through its paces and make sure I do some videos to show you the differences. But this is, as you can see, the interface is pretty much the same. It's not a major revision. Uh, it's more of an upgrade and an update based on the changes to the operating system with iOS 10 and with Mac OS Sierra. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.